So coming to eyelids, the basic anatomy, the layers of the eyelid from outside inwards are skin, subcutaneous tissue, there's the, then there is a layer of uh, striated muscle, LPS, levator palpebris superiors and orbicularis uh, oculi, then there is a fibrous tissue, uh, it consists of the tarsal plate at the center and the orbital septum in the periphery. So that is an important landmark, you should know about this orbital septum. Then there is a layer of uh, non-striated mullous muscle, it rises from the LPS and gets inserted into the tarsus. It is an accessory lead elevator. Okay. Then the palpable connective. As you can see in this picture, first is the first is the skin subcutaneous tissue, then there is a, a striated muscle, then non-striated muscle, and then conjunctiva. Coming to levator palpebrae superiors, it is the main elevator of the eyelids. It arises from the sphenoid at the apex of the orbit. It passes above the superior rectus along the roof of the orbit to reach the eyelid. It is then converted into thin aponeurosis. LPS splits into two layers, superficial inserts into the lid where it forms a crease and the deep inserts into the tarsal plate. This forms an aponeurosis that is where uh, all these things happen and uh, it is supplied by third nerve. So when there is third nerve damage, what happens is there will be ptosis. That is because levator palpebrae superiors has been affected. So this is how it is. So there are, this is the aponeurosis, the levator palpebrae superiors muscle becomes into aponeurosis where the superior, superficial uh, uh, gets attached to the skin and the deep uh, attaches to the tarsal plate. As you can see the blue uh, tissue, blue structure that is called that is the tarsal plate. Then there is something called uh, orbicular oculi. It is responsible for lid closure. Uh, palpable part of the muscle arises from the frontal process of the maxilla and uh, lacrimal bone inserts into the lateral uh, palpable raphe. As you can see here there is a lateral palpable raphe on the lateral side and uh, that is where the insertion happens. Uh, this is supplied by the seventh nerve. So, lid closure by the orbicularis oculi is supplied by the seventh nerve, whereas uh, lid elevation by the levator palpebrae superiors is supplied by the third nerve. Glands of the eyelids are meibomian glands, modified sebaceous glands, it is located in the tarsal plate, but the ducts open at the lid margin. So, this is basically sebaceous gland. Then there is something called the glands of Zs, a modified sebaceous gland located at the base of the lash follicle. If it is inflamed, that causes sty. Okay, Zs gland causes sty pilosebaceous gland and uh, glands of mole modified sweat glands located at the lid margin between two lashes or uh, two lash follicles. So uh, there is a mnemonic uh, which uh, during my entrance exam I read it is uh, sweaty mole. So that uh, makes you uh, remember uh, the glands of uh, mole is a sweat gland. So inflammation of eyelids are uh, basically seboric uh, blepharitis. It is a chronic inflammation of the anterior lid lamina involving the glands of Z's and mole associated with seboric dermatitis and dermatitis. Uh, basically, we treat it with uh, lid hygiene and uh, local antibiotic uh, steroid uh, ointment or drops. Lid hygiene basically involves uh, cleaning of the eyelashes as well as uh, using hot compress and then uh, massaging on the eyelid. Next is the staphylococcal anterior blepharitis. It is a chronic inflammation of the anterior lamina of the lids. Uh, as the name suggests, uh, anterior blepharitis uh, caused by staphylococcal infection. It is associated with scaling, crusting of the lid margin. The crust on removal may lead small bleeding ulcers on the lid margin. Long standing cases lead to madrosis, poliosis, trichiasis and thickening of lid margins which we will talk soon. And the treatment is lid hygiene and local antibiotic steroid. This is how it is, there is crusting scaling here and on removing uh, you will have uh, bleeding. So basically we have to treat uh, the antibiotics and lid uh, hygiene. Posterior blepharitis, otherwise called as meibomian gland disease. It is excessive and abnormal meibomian gland secretion. Uh, manifesting a scapping of the meibomian gland orifice with oil globules, uh, pouting recession or uh, plugging of uh, meibomian gland orifice. Uh, pressure on the lid margin results in expression of uh, meibomian fluid that may be turbined or toothpaste like. Uh, this, is, uh, this is how uh, the presentation will be. Uh, this is how it is. Uh, the first image that shows the uh, meibomian gland orifice capping. And then uh, there is a toothpaste like material that comes out uh, on pressure that is how it will be. So as you can see here, this is like a most satisfying video where you press and there will be a lot of toothpaste like material that comes out. The same treatment, antibiotic steroid ointment and lid hygiene. Inflammation of the lid glands, okay. external hordeolum, sty, acute inflammation of the glands of Z is painful lid uh, swelling point of maximum tenderness at the base of the involved eyelash will be seen. 
so basically stylo uh, sty is a uh, uh, inflammation of the z gland you can uh, remove it as s and z almost similar uh, letters and the treatment is hot compressed antibiotics anti inflammatory drugs and epilation of the involved eyelash can be done audiolum internum it is uh, the opposite of externum acute inflammation of the meibomian gland painful lid swelling point of maximum tenderness is away from the lid margin that is the uh, crux between uh, the lid margin whether it's near the lid margin then it's sty if it's away from the lid margin it's meibomian gland uh, audiolum internum and same uh, hot compressed antibiotic and anti inflammatory drugs are given this is the most important uh, condition called calisthenics it's very common it's a chronic granulomatous inflammation of the meibomian gland it's painless lid swelling the patient just have a swelling as you can see in this picture the patient will have a lid swelling it's most common the upper lid here the picture shows lower lid and um, what we do is basically we do uh, in, uh, incision and curettage as you can see in this picture where we clamp that uh, uh, calisthenics and then we uh, vertically incise and uh, the the pus comes out it's basically a chronic granulomatous inflammation and uh, all these things comes out and intralesional steroids can also be given but uh, the patient is painless and um, they don't uh, have any other uh, issue other than uh, there's a, a swelling there so even if they live for years also it will be there and it will not cause any issues